Hey, welcome to the One Hard Podcast. Again, I'm Noah Davis, and this is sponsored to you by One Hard Insurance Group. We talk about what? Chaos, confusion, and conflict. Always want you to keep those things in mind because that's something that you want to avoid with your family. And life insurance is one way to help avoid that chaos, confusion, and conflict when something happens. So let me share another story with you. Several years ago, when my dad passed away, my dad had about $3,500 worth of life insurance. Now, this was over almost 30 years ago. So the funeral cost about $5,000. Now, this wasn't something that was uh, a big deal because, you know, I had, you know, seven brothers. So we were able to come up with the, the difference, you know, pretty, pretty easy. You know, I mean, we had decent jobs and that sort of thing. We were able to come up with that money. But what really got me to really thinking about this um, was what do other families do? Now, fortunately, we were a pretty tight family, so we didn't have the chaos, confusion, and conflict that normally may come in trying to come up with money for that, but everybody doesn't have that luxury. And that's what really got me into the life insurance business and really understanding how life insurance works and what you need to do with it. So, let me talk to you about one of the reasons he may only have had, you know, $3,500 worth of coverage. So I want to talk to you about that third kind of life insurance. Remember I talked to you about whole life. I talked to you about universal life. I mean, um, term life. And today I want to speak to you about universal life. Now remember, I told you even within all of those, there are still small segments about that. So don't forget, I'm always here to help. Reach out to me. I can definitely help it. I can break it down and explain it to you, but not just explain it to you. I'll show you what your policy does and how it truly works. So now, universal life. Again, not a bad product to have, but you must, must, and this is the one that's most critical, truly understand how it works. The average person probably should never purchase a universal life policy, okay? Now let me tell you why. Because a universal life policy, it's set up, it's kind of a mixture of the whole life policy and the term life policy together. So it has attributes of both. It has longevity, or at least seems to have the longevity of a whole life policy. But it also kind of has the price of a term policy. So it's kind of priced between a term policy and a whole life policy. But the thing that you have to understand with universal life policies uh, is that life insurance has a, a set cost, whether it's term, whether it's whole life, whether it's universal. The life insurance is based on two things. All life insurance is based on your age and your health. So don't ever forget that because people look and say, well, this policy is cheaper than that policy, this policy is cheaper than the other policy, but you got to understand what you're buying and you got to understand price versus value. So there is a reason why one insurance policy is cheaper than the other. Okay, it's not that they, some company has just said arbitrarily, we're going to make this policy cheaper. There are some things that they are not doing that some other companies are doing the reason that they are able to cut that cost. So the thing that you have to understand is that, you know, all of us can, you know, buy a car, okay? But the decision that we need to make is, do we want to buy, you know, a, a Toyota Corolla or do we want to buy a Lexus? Now they're both in the Toyota family, right? But one is on this end and the other one's on this end. See, you can't buy a Toyota Corolla and expect to get all the navigation systems and you know all the uh, the, the run flat tires and and all the gadgets and, and the toys that you're gonna get in the Lexus. Okay, that's not gonna happen. So, but you gotta understand. But you just may need just to get back and forth to work. And the only thing you need is a Corolla, and that's fine too. So you just gotta understand the differences and have someone to be able to sit down with you and really explain the differences. Now, basic difference with universal life insurance policies. You remember I talked about all policies are based on two things, the age of the person 
and the health of the person, okay? Now, the policy uh, or the price of the policy, just like with old life, it's a steady cost for that policy, okay? Now, with a universal life policy, your price that you're paying may start down here, okay? The, um, and for each age, the, the price that you're paying is steady, the, the, but the cost of the policy may start down here. But as you get older, the cost of the policy continues to increase. Well, keep in mind that your price that you're paying still stays steady. Now, at some point, the cost of the policy is going to go up above what you're paying. Now, somebody has to pay that difference. You think it's the life insurance company that pays that difference? Probably not. I mean, they're not giving anything away. So guess what? Your policy, just like a whole life insurance policy, it has something that's called a cash accumulation in that policy. Now, what happens is, is that accumulation from your policy actually is taken from your cash accumulation and that difference is made up from what you're paying to what the insurance actually costs. Now, that may not seem like a big deal because the money's coming out, but here's the problem. The problem is, is that later on, you get from the insurance company, it's what I call the infamous love letter. Now, what that letter states is, Mr. Smith, thank you very much for being a loyal client of ours for the last 25 years, but However, your policy uh, premium has exceeded uh, the value of your cash accumulation. So you will need to pay an additional $125 per month to, um, to alleviate that difference of, that you're paying. And you're going, what? I've been paying this policy all these years and all of a sudden you tell me I'm not paying enough? because if you do not pay that additional premium, your policy will lapse on this date. So now you're faced with the hard reality of, do I let this policy go? Um, because I've had it a very long time, I don't have any cash accumulation in it, or do I pay the additional premium, which I can't afford, or now I'm faced with going to get another life insurance policy at this time. Now keep in mind, I'm now 25 years older and my diabetes has kicked in, my heart is not working the way it used to be, you know, and I, I'm just in, in terrible shape according to health. So now I still have to go get another life insurance policy or I pay the additional money to keep this policy. So you have to understand that that's one of the reasons why for most people, you should not purchase a universal life insurance policy. Now, if you have the money and you're looking for a tax shelter or something, somewhere to put money to, um, to kind of you know, keep that there to invest it, that might be a good way to go. But for the average person, the universal life policy is not the best place to put your money. So you have to understand how your life insurance works. Look, keep in mind, I'm here for you guys. I'm here, you know how to reach me, my information is on the bottom of the screen, contact me. I don't just sit down and try to sell you something. If you have something that's working for you, that's great, I'm going to tell you that specifically and you need to keep that. But I'm also going to break everything down for you and help you see in your actual policy how it's working, how it's performing, what it's going to do and what you're going to be left with in the end. So keep that in mind. Look, I'm here to help. I'm Noah Davis, One Heart Insurance Group. Let's avoid all the chaos, confusion, and conflict that comes with owning a universal life policy. Reach out to me. Thank you. I appreciate you listening.